I'm Annie. And I'm Leah. And this is Lactation Business Coaching with Annie and Leah, where we talk about the smart way to create a compassionate and professional private practice. Let's dive in. Well, hey there, Leah. Hey, Annie. How are you doing today? I am great because in just a couple of weeks, we are having a deeper dive into clinical complexities with Kathy Watson, Jenna, or I should say Catherine Watson, Jenna, BS, IBCLC, esteemed author of Supporting Sucking Skills, my IBCLC when my first babies were born, babies were first born 14 years ago. I actually looked up to see when it was that I saw her with my older baby and it's not quite our 14 year anniversary, but it's really close. I think (gasps) it was like, yeah. And so that was kind of lovely to find out in the email. I saw that she said, keep me posted. And that's something that I say to my clients all the time. I was like, did I, I got it from her. her? Oh, how fun. Yeah. I'm so excited. I love her brain. (laughs) I love her brain because it's just, she's got to be like one of the smartest people that I have ever interacted with. I just love her brain and love her teaching style. But what I'm super excited about, we know her so much as like this author, this researcher, but I've never really interacted with her and talked about like her journey as a lactation consultant and her practice and how that's evolved and how she got into all these different things. Like, I am so, so excited about that to see this other side and to know kind of like her journey because that's something I don't know about her. I just know her super, super smartness and all the amazing things she's done for the world of lactation and like information she's taught me over the years. I mean, I've met her like 10 years ago at a conference and interacted with her many times since then. She's been so uh, just pivotal teacher in in my life in the sense of like I've learned things from her and then like shifted how I was doing something you know it's just it's just awesome so I'm so excited she's gonna be on our you know deeper dive with us it's gonna be so amazing so yay it's y'all gonna be great sign up, she's, be there she's so generous and she's so kind and she's yes. so I mean smart doesn't even begin to describe I know it. I know and I've gone with her to. I've gone with her with my clients where I'm like, I still don't know what's going on. Help me. And just watching her, I've experienced her care as a mom, but then also going, watching her care for the families that I'm working with and how gentle and kind she is with these parents and these babies. I'm just so excited. It was, I I like did a little happy dance when she said (laughs) she was available. And if you want to register, if you've never been to a deeper dive before, it is a conversation that you get to be a part of. We cover a different topic each time. You can register and learn more at lactationbusinesscoaching.com. And that will take us to a page where you can learn about our deeper dives. You can sign up. You can either sign up for one or you can become a member and get all of them. Plus our vault going all the way back to January, 2020, when we first started these. So uh, lots of different ways to engage. Everyone gets the recording if you sign up in advance. So don't worry if you can't make the exact time. It's December 14th at 4 p.m., Eastern time. And we hope that you can be there. Definitely. Definitely. So Leah, what's the topic for our episode today? I'm so excited about this topic because we are talking about fun things for lactation consultants. It's coming close to the holiday season and you might be thinking about like, what do I want? <laughs> so we're going to talk about all the things that we have and love right now, both from like fun boob stuff to also like some clinical tools that we're using and really loving right now. So I'm excited about this because I have so many fun things that I've gotten recently. What's something that you've gotten or have had for a long time that is just your fun? Like I can carry this around and it makes sense because I'm an IBCLC. (laughs) I think a lot of our things, like if regular people were walking around with them, it'd kind of be like, oh, that's interesting. But we're like IBCLCs. We're loving all the boobs. Uh, What do you have? What's something that you've gotten? Oh, gosh, I have so many things. I I have earrings. I actually have these beautiful gold plated earrings. Uh, My husband is obsessed with going on Etsy and finding random, like one of a kind (laughs) things. So I've got, so I've got the boob earrings. They're very large. And if you don't look too closely, 
they just look like big gold circles, but they actually, there's a little nipple on there and they're just beautiful. He's also, he also found me this, uh, like a keychain holder that is like basically, uh, the top half of a woman's body. I mean, it's blue and enamel. So it's not like realistic looking. (laughs) It's very artsy looking key holder. So like her arms are the keys, but then her boobs are right there. The best thing he found, which I don't carry around because it would get destroyed and it's too beautiful to get destroyed, but an an artist, and I'll have to find out for the show notes who the artist was that made these because it was not meant to be like a an actual useful thing, but more like a conceptual piece this artist came up with. It is a giant umbrella oh, wow. that when you open it up, it's a it's a breast with a nipple and an areola. And oh you would only gosh. see it from looking at it from above. It's huge. I would never take it outside in New York City. <laughs> it is too beautiful to be yeah. opened. But I showed it to, we were telling a friend about it. And the friend was like, whoa, whoa, you got one of those umbrellas? I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. of course I did. It's a breast. He's like, no, no, no. It's this like artist thing. Like, And I was like, oh, even better. <laughs> two, two things that I <laughs> love, breasts and contemporary art. So Right. And, and a functional piece of contemporary and art. And functional, you know? but non-functional because I'm not... I, I won't You're not going to use it. I know. Oh my gosh. What about you, Leah? See a picture of that. Fun stuff I have that I really like. I have these fun boob socks and they're so kind of like over the top because they're the nipples on them are like bright red. And so when I wear them, it's so funny. The dads are the ones oftentimes that will notice them first. And then like eventually they'll be staring at my feet for so long. I'm like, yes, they're boobs. And then I always have this funny joke and I'm like, and if your nipples look like this, please call me. And so it it lightens up the consult. And because I take my shoes off at everybody's house, you know, it, it works out well because I'm like walking around. And so it's always been like a fun little like conversation starter and like lighten the mood. And like, it, I love those socks. I wear them. I have like four or five pair. I wear them almost every day and they're fun. And then I also just recently on Etsy, you know, Etsy's like such a fun place to go and, and dive deep into all the things that you can purchase lactation wise. But my intern had this really cute like hair scrunchie. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a cute hair scrunchie. I've never seen one. It's it's thicker than normal ones, you know? And I was like, where'd you get that? She said, Etsy. So I like totally went on and got it. And the really nice thing about this is I have never been able to like achieve the cute messy bun. And this is the only like thing that I can put around my hair that it's like, oh, actually that's okay. Cause my hair just like is so straight. It like flies out of the messy bun. Like I will not be restrained. And so <laughs> this, this one is like really awesome. So it's like been very functional. I actually wear it. I'm like, well, you know, people can wear boobs all the time, right? It's fine. Not just to work. I'll wear it like other places too. And I'm like, if you're looking that close at my head, you know, you're going to see boobs and that's, that's on you, not me. And I love it. I would love to see the, like the Visco lactation consultant, like the Visco girl. Do you know about these? This is like from like two years ago. It was like the big thing of like, you wore the messy bun and you had the reusable straw and big oversized t-shirts oh, yes. or sweatshirts. Yes. Okay. And the, and the whole thing was like the messy, one of the things was the messy bun. So like now I'm just <laughs> picturing you consultant. as like the lactation visco girl. <laughs> Definitely. And then I also really like on lactation hub, they have a scrub top that's like covered in boobs and the material on it. I just like super love it, especially here in Houston. It's, you know, most of the time so hot. And so it's like the perfect summer scrub top. The only issue I've had with that one is, you know, like for work, people get it. I'm walking around the clinic, totally fine. But then I'm like, oh, hey, I need to run through the grocery store. And sometimes I'm like getting a lot of people staring at me because it's literally like the entire shirt is boobs, you know. And I love it because it's like all different kinds of boobs, you know. So it's not just like, this is the way boobs should look. It's like boobs in every form and fashion that you can possibly imagine. So boobs and chest in all the ways. I love it. So I love wearing it, but I do have to consider like, am I going anywhere else after? (laughs) Because not that it's a problem, but it's just funny because I like, oh man, I'm really standing out and people are staring at like why I have boobs all over me. And I want to have like a big sign on the back of me, like I'm a lactation consultant. Like 
this is why, but it doesn't matter. Free the nipple, <laughs> like put the boobs out there. It's fine. I am dressed appropriately <laughs> for my vocation. That's yes. how I feel when I wear my tricky nipples, pay my bills. Yes, I know. That That's I get another... from boob tees from Nichelle yes. and Courtney. And it's like, I am just shy enough that I'm like, I just don't, I, know. I don't know that I can, I I can pull this too. off. I, have I love that- it though. I teach those class. shirts are so soft. I love I them. love their shirts so much. And I teach a class quarterly called first breastfeeding first responders. And it's for like doulas and people that are like the first responders, like postpartum nurses and doulas and midwives, things like that. And I wear that shirt like because it's very appropriate for there, you know, and it always, again, is like this great conversation starter and everybody's like laughing to start out. So I love boob tees. I have almost every one of them. I have a I have the so Texas one and I have the that one and I have the love in every drop. Is that what it says? Yeah, the that's the one. one. Yes. Yes. I have that one. I have so many of those. I have like totally bought every single one that they have, I think. <laughs> it's like I have so love. many of them, but yet I still don't have enough. And I know because I, I really need to like actually go back because Cause some of them are, I'm like, I picked a, I picked certain colors and now I'm like, Oh, I want it. I should have gotten different colors. I yes. had one that I got that I got it in pink and I really liked the pink in the picture. And then I was like, I think I might just not be able to pull off this pink outside the house, but I want this to be an outside the house shirt. So then I'm like, Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going <laughs> to cut the neckline out. Ooh. Like it's 1987. Yes. And and that was a terrible idea. Oh, no, I should have, no. I should not have made my own styling decisions oh, around no. this shirt. So I need to rebuy that shirt, but I think I might go for a different color or maybe I will say, Embrace you know what, who cares if anybody, including me thinks I can pull off pink. If I want to pull off pink, wear the I'll pink. wear pink. A hundred percent. I love, you know, my business colors are purple. And so I love that almost all their shirts I can get in purple, you know, so almost all of them are purple mine and I have a couple of gray ones too and they actually work really well like I can wear them with my scrub pants and kind of like mix in the mix of what I wear to work every day it's kind of fun to to mix it up sometimes I love all the boob stuff it's so fun and it's you know just makes it fun to to have these statements that we can put out there and promote our profession day in and day out. Even if we get some crazy looks, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And there are other shirts that I've seen out there that I like to, I mean, I'm a, I'm a boob tea loyalist, but I also, I have the lactation consultants for black lives matter t-shirt. And I once bumped into my friend in the neighborhood, who's a midwife. And I was wearing that shirt and I was at the farmer's market, of course, <laughs> as you would be wearing that shirt. And she walked up to me. She's like, I almost wore my midwives for black lives matter shirt today. I have it in the same color. And I was like, that would have been like, you would have to take a, a picture. You would have to like, take a picture, take a picture also, that moment. So on brand for the two of us. And, <laughs> um, I do like that shirt too, but yeah. and I need to see more. I, I don't wear t-shirts enough. Cause I think like, I just had some thing about like, do t-shirts look good on me? I don't know. I don't know what my, my hangup was about t-shirts, yeah, but so now that I'm wearing scrubs for work, um, and I have been wearing the scrub tops because I got them embroidered with my name and my practice name on them. But I also like the idea of dressing it down with a t-shirt. Yeah. That's I mix it up. Too. Like some days I just want to have a statement shirt. So I'll wear one of my boob tees with my scrub pants And I think they can look pretty sharp. Like sometimes I'll even like tuck it in. Sometimes I'll leave it out. It looks less professional, you know, maybe more casual, but then you can tuck it in. You can make it look really sharp. It looks just as cute as your nice shirt. Yeah, totally do that. Okay. I'm going to do it. And I've also never (laughs) tucked a shirt in a day in my life. So really, yeah. (laughs) Embrace the shirt tucking. It's like the thing now, right? It is. Like I I saw like people are even tucking sweaters in. I was like, what is this? I I had no idea. I'm so not in the fashion (laughs) space. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on in the fashion world. I just wear what's mostly just what's comfortable is my fashion (laughs) sense. And I have found come around to the whole scrubs thing. I was I was an anti scrub. I remember when you were I was kind of vocally Mm -hmm, mm anti-scrub. And now I'm like, where have you been? all my life. I just love it so much for like not having to think about what I'm going to wear. Yes. I just, and pockets. 
Yes. And so many pockets. I'll wear them once I'm home just to be able to carry stuff up and down the stairs more and have my phone in a comfortable place. Like a hundred percent. I need, I need. And that's a great gift idea because they can get expensive and they are and nice ones too. Ones that like are going to last. Yeah. One brand I tried, I really liked. And then I realized like the sizing just wasn't quite right for me. So I switched to another one that had some stretch and now I'm like, okay, these are my scrubs and I I want more. And I picked dark red for my scrubs, which is not a great color. If you're a lactation consultant, because like, I'm like, I am walking around as like an abscessed breast, but it's my (laughs) my favorite color to wear. So I'm like, I can see that look good on you. Yeah. It's totally fine. I know. I I used to wear always purple. And then we started to bring in like black scrubs because I think they look like really sharp, you know, and then the, the material ones that I most recently got, they don't fade at all. So I can like wash them on hot water. It doesn't matter. It's just this, I don't know, probably some terrible synthetic material, but it's this material that stays looking really sharp. So I feel like no matter what, no matter how I feel that day, if my hair is in the messy bun, I still look really sharp in my nice black scrubs and they fit so good. And they have this wonderful elastic high waist that like yes, all the things smooth and stretch with comfort. I'm all about the comfort, like totally. Yeah. So we're- Why not? Yeah, We've gotten through all the like fun stuff, I think, because we also wanted to talk about like some clinical tools that we've recently or maybe not recently have been utilizing. So is there anything from a clinical side that, you know, that maybe you've used more recently? Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a birthday a few weeks ago and from when we recorded this episode And I bought myself a birthday present. I bought myself a second monitor for my laptop. So I went on the wire cutter, like right before my birthday, they, they're a blog for the New York times that just basically reviews everything. And at this point I'm like, I just like do what they say I should do. (laughs) And they had a whole thing about like optimize your workstation. And it was like, raise your laptop, get a, a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse, and have a second screen. And I was like, okay, happy birthday to me. I got a second screen and I'm like, where, why didn't Isn't I do it this? Life changing. Ridiculous. Life that I didn't changing for everything. And for the virtual visits, I'm not like, I, I was like having to click back and forth and like minimize and like missing things. And I'm like, now you, they can, the clients can be big. My charting can be big. Everything is at the right ergonomic height. I got a bolster that I put my feet on that was a present that I did. I made my business by me for my birthday because <laughs> it ha- it does make my day-to-day life so better. Much and better. Yes. yeah, if you haven't taken the plunge, I think I just didn't realize I could have a second screen. Oh my gosh. With my laptop. So awesome. Yes. You know what I like it for? I've, I've recently also gotten a second screen, like a humongous one. We just got so lucky. My, you know, we just got our hands on a used one. Somebody was getting rid of, and I was like, yes, I'll take it. And what I'm loving for this kind of silly, but like I have just a Mac, like a pretty small MacBook Air. So my screen has always been tiny. So every time I look at like my insurance claims spreadsheet, it's like I'm scrolling, 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 and then over and then back and then down. And boom, the first time I saw it on this screen, I feel like it was one of those moments where like, you know, the sun broke three through the clouds and like people started singing around me because I was like, oh, you can see everything in one view. Like this is the most amazing thing, which is like, I'm a very, very visual person. So to have that, like my mind just got blown and I was like, I understand so much now. (laughs) Whereas before I was like, I do not know what's going on on this stupid thing. I get so frustrated with it. I'm like, I don't know what these colors are. I don't know what any of these things mean. And then when it was all in front of me, I was like, this is so amazing. I love it so much. I have been on a hunt for like, so this is kind of clinical, like this whole, you know, we're wearing masks. We need to wear masks. Like, how can I make this mask situation better? Because I totally recognized that my interaction with babies just feels different in a mask, right? Because before I could really coax smiles out of them and and really feel like I was getting some connection as before I'm like examining them, right? Like, so that was always a big thing for me. I wanted to make a little connection with these little nuggets before I'm 
looking around their mouth or assessing them, right? And I was feeling like there was a, li- a little bit of a limitation with the masks. And so I, you know, was racking my brain. What could I do? What could I do? And I was like, you know what? Babies love contrasting colors. I'm like, and now, you know, six months after the pandemic started, like every company that has ever made masks is like, I can make you a mask in any way, shape or form, right? Like we've got all these like fun masks now. So I was like, I think that there could be a mask out there that maybe would be fun for a newborn or even an older baby to look at, like with contrasting colors. So I sat on Amazon and went down the wormhole of Amazon And I just put in printed masks and oh my gosh, I found some so cute masks and the result was the babies freaking love them. Like smiles, like love it. There's one particular one that I'm like, it it only comes in a set with all these other colors. So I hate that because I only get like, I think 15 of them or something like that. So it always makes me so sad because then I have like 60 other masks and these 15 ones that have this like bright bird on the front of them. I mean, they're beautiful, like artwork. And the babies just love them. They're so engaged with me. Their their eyes are on me the whole time. You know, they're excited to interact with me because I'm like, I'm at least a bit more interesting than just eyeballs, you know, and glasses. And so it's really fun. I've just discovered it maybe over the last month. And I cannot tell you, I mean, if you are a lactation consultant, go out there. I mean, there's so many different prints. (laughs) That was so funny. If you're a lactation consultant, duh, you're listening to our podcast. (laughs) But (laughs) if you're interacting with babies, duh, you're going to be doing that too. But you could find stuff that might be something that also is fun for you. No, you know, there's like all kinds of different prints now that I've found them like, just try to find things that are contrasting because that's what the little babies just love to look at, you know? So go have fun with that. That's been like the best clinical find I've had in the last couple months here. It's been really, really helped my practice so much. So it seems so small. That's but a it good one. A big difference. You told you mentioned those. It might have been in like one of the groups. It was. I think I said yeah. it in a group recently. Yeah. And so I was like, like immediately went to buy them because that true, I yeah. love babies so much. And it does make me sad when they're just like not interested in me. And I like you, I was like always like, I was always, I'm so I'm good with babies. I know. And, and, and I nobody works so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna switch to those because also, yeah, it's just fun too. Like, why not? We gotta do it. And yeah, I just put them over my N95s. I still wear KN95 for every visit and I wear those. I guess the other thing with that is I found these KN95s. They're they're the goofiest looking things that you can ever imagine because they're like the duck bill ones. But they're the only ones for my face that seal like really, really good. But after trying, I can't even tell you how many that I have wasted. They have like these like really soft straps on them. It's really interesting, like go behind your head. So I guess they're like an N95, but these straps that go behind your head are not elastic bands. And that has been also life changing. So it, I'll have to f- see if I can find that link to those because it took me so long to find them like something that's comfortable because I've been I've tried everything to just be comfortable, and especially like when I'm in the clinic, I might be wearing it and not get to take it off my face for, you know, eight hours at all. And so I'm like, my face was just like stripes across it for several hours after I took it off. And so these are the only ones that like seal and fit really good, but also don't leave like horrific marks on my face because they're too tight or pulling on my ears or all the things, you know, how it goes with these masks. It's like finding the right one out there is so hard. Have you found anything else like clinical wise that you're really liking? I always ask for books um, every year for, for for my birthday and for Christmas. People ask what I'm always, there's always a new book that I want to read from like either Mm -hmm. our, you know, lactation or another discipline or, you know, something about like neuroscience or so I always, I maintain a a wish list of books, fiction books and nonfiction books over at my favorite local bookshop, astoriabookshop.com so that um, I can support them. The books are more expensive if you buy them through the local bookshop. And that's the whole point is yeah, to keep, keep those local bookshops running. going. Yeah. So yeah, I always, a book is always great. I ended up with, I end up with like so many great books because every, you know, everybody who loves me knows that I love to read. And so they buy me books. And so I had my, my intern came over 
for a uh, in-person clinical training day, just at my house. We called it that, but it was like, she came to my house and I showed her how to do test weights on my scale. We walked through some oral assessment stuff oh, on, cool. um, on my puppet and just talked through a lot of things. And I brought out my books and I'm like, you can borrow as many of these as you want. And she's like, Oh I think gosh, I can so handle many. two of these right now. <laughs> I'm like, come back for more. The library is always open. You know, if you yes. want, you know, beyond the sea squirt or the, there's the the book about breath. I think I have like, oh, I have like, yes. I like buy everything. Like if it's even tangentially related to the work we do, I yeah. want to own it and I want to read it and I want somebody else to buy it for me. Yeah. I love like the Jaws book. There's the breath book is so good. I love those that like help us see how impactful the work that we do is like, you know, it's like you can kind of see if this growth and development starts properly with good oral function, then, you know, like this is how we're impacting it long term. But those two books are like crazy life changing. I will say my last like fun clinical find, I have to give credit to my colleague that works with me, Heather. She's so amazing. And she's also an amazing boob finder. So that's what I call her. I'm like, you're the boob finder because she found these, like, it's the perfect teaching boob to me. And then just recently they came out with a bigger one. So it was, I'm showing Annie right now, this, this squishy boob, like it's such a wonderful texture. It's so amazing. But it's a little small, you know, I mean, like it's a handful. So, you know, a lot of people have a lot more breasts. And so it was great. She found one that's bigger, although it's so funny. It literally weighs a pound. (laughs) But I mean, like it's more realistic. And that has been (laughs) the one of the best things. Like people who ever touch this, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best, most realistic feeling breast they've ever touched. And it's so hilarious because if you go online to the Amazon description for this one, it's like, it's like a stress ball boob and they go into great detail about why you need this to squeeze all day. It's so funny, but I actually bought a case of them. So I'm like, these people from Amazon are probably like, what is somebody doing with a case of, you know, stress ball breasts? But Hey, I gave them away as gifts to doulas and midwives. And it was so fun because everybody picked them up and they were like, oh my gosh, this is the best boob. So all credit goes to Heather for that one. I'm um, stealing and- that idea, by the way. I'm sorry. If you live in New York City, I might you might just be getting yeah, a, I made a little gift for me bags at some point. With these boobs and of course some like chocolate candy and business cards. And it was such a fun gift to give to people because it was useful. And also like, Hey, we need to share the fact that I found this really great, great boob for everybody, you know? So there's so many fun things out there. I'm sure like, I wish this was one of our conversations that we have in the deeper dive where everybody could share like all their fun finds. But if you guys have fun finds, please share them with us. You can do that on our Facebook pages and things like that. It's so much fun to hear what everybody's finding out there. And I'm always like, I want to spend more money on I know. fun stuff. I can always spend more money. I know, like half my income is going to fun stuff and clinical stuff. It's so, so fun. Well, this was so fun today and um, can't wait for our deeper dive uh, with Kathy Watson, Jenna, um, if you're listening to this on the day, the episode comes out, it's in a week, still definitely time to register. Hope you can be there. And until next time, Leah, it was great chatting with you. And now I'm going to go spend some money. Yep. Me too. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to learn more about our monthly deeper dives and how to support our podcast for as little as $1 a month visit lactationbusinesscoaching.com. Don't forget to leave us a rating and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.